In the last video where I kind of shared with you guys that we are finally back to regular vlogging again, many of you guys requested that I update you on animals, farm, who's here, where's everybody, how's everybody doing? And so I thought that's what we would do today. I'm gonna to take you around the farm and it's a little chilly this morning. I might have to actually go get some gloves. I'm kind of, I'm cold. It's a little chilly this morning and it's a little windy. I'm gonna wear my lapel mic so that hopefully the wind noise won't be too bad, but I'm gonna take you around and just kind of update you on what you've missed since we've done oot in a boot, you know, kind of vlog. So let's do that. Let me grab some gloves and let's get a little update on the This Gathered Nest, Fairhaven Farms, farm family tour, animals, I don't know. There's probably some kind of catchy name, but my brain isn't gonna come up with it today, y'all. Not today. All right, y'all, we will start up here in the upper pasture. As you can see, Miss Peaches is still here. Hello, Miss Peaches. And that's her mama, Ellie. And we got baby Peaches right here. They are both uh, doing well very large uh, they both need to lose a little weight many horses are notorious for eating too much and getting fat <laughs> uh, it's not good for their health they can founder there's lots of lots of issues with that so we need to we need to put them on a diet i'm on a diet and then we have mr Bo right there that's my dad's old man horse he just turned 26 years old yes you heard that right mr Bo, 26 years old I would argue maybe the healthiest horse on this entire property. He rarely, if ever, gets sick. You gonna come say hello, Mr. Cooper? So this is Mr. Cooper. This is our horse that, well, it used to belong to my parents and uh, we bought him from them a couple years ago, but he's got some issues with his hawks, so he can't be ridden much. Though, according to the vet, at some point, his hawks will actually just fuse on their own. And once they do that, he won't be in pain anymore, so he can be ridden. But for now, we ride him very sparingly and lightly. Um, but this is one of Kennedy and Shelby's, I suppose. This is like sort of our family horse. Mr. Cooper, he's doing well. Hello? 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 You gonna show us your T-verse? He's very curious and kind of a turkey sometimes. You, you may notice, or maybe not, that there's a horse missing from this pasture that you might be used to seeing up here, and that would be Mr. Flash. Mr. Flash was my mom's horse um, that she had for a very long time. He's not as old as Bo. I'm watching this guy, he's gonna bite my shirt. Um, he's not as old as Bo. Don't you bite my hair, Cooper. Uh, not as old as Bo, but he was an older horse. He was my mom's uh, mounted shooting competition horse for a long time as well. And just, I would say probably three weeks ago, Three or four weeks ago he um, went to horsey heaven so it's when I tell you guys I'm gonna tell you I'll just give you like the fair warning that there's a number of animals on this property that have gone to horsey or not horsey but animal heaven yeah so there's quite a few animals on the farm you're going to find as we go through this that are no longer with us and like as in on on the planet on the earth like not that we gave them away but that they've passed away so, um, you know, it's kind of, it's not that it's an excuse, but it's part of the struggle I've had with vlogging and sharing farm stuff is there's so much up and down. There's so many uh, fun and awesome things, but there's also so many hard things and things that are just kind of sad and have been real life lessons for us, but are hard to deal with. And sometimes, you know, I've said this before, but like, I would like for our vlogs to be happy and it doesn't always feel so happy and it gets a little old sometimes feeling like i'm constantly sharing like pets passing away and stuff that's my least favorite thing to discuss okay let's switch really quick we're going to kind of bounce between property stuff and animal stuff so here we have the barn which i think now i'm already forgetting what i showed in the last vlog but riley my nephew has been pressure washing he started the garage as well. It's not finished yet, but he pressure washed the barn and we are going to get this sucker painted. And then uh, Christopher and I are, this is just a hot mess. Okay, y'all, it's just a mess. It needs new siding. The siding is coming off there. And uh, we're getting overrun with mice because we don't have barn cats right now. So we are gonna try to add two barn cats. So just in case you're curious, that's again, one of those things that like, I feel like I used to be more 
worried about sharing things with people, if you don't live on a farm, if you don't have properties or animals, whether they are for food or not, sometimes the lifestyle is, a, is an adjustment for people. And if you live in the city, if you live in a condo, in an apartment, in a high rise, in downtown, in a city somewhere, it can be hard sometimes to like wrap your head around the way that things are done and why. I'm gonna do my best to kind of share things and then also explain if someone has questions or whatever to try to understand. But barn cats, when I say barn cats, I mean not, not necessarily feral cats because barn cats can be very friendly, but cats that are born to moms who are already barn cats, so they grow up in a barn their first, you know, six, eight, 10 weeks or whatever, they're hunters, they're, you know, cats, it's very hard to get rid of their natural instincts, but barn cats have real strong instincts. And it's not that they're pets because of course we love all of our animals, but they're not pets in the sense of like, they don't live in our house or anything like that. They serve the purpose of keeping the barn mouse free and our barn cats have always been happy. They've always liked us and been friendly. So anyways, we're in search of two new barn cats to get rid of the mice around here and take care of the mouse problem. So we are also gonna be adding new siding. Oh my Lord, I see a bunch of wasp. Oh, oh, oh I see a bunch of wasp, net, wasp, wasps nests up there that are gonna to need to be taken care of. So yeah, we're gonna to need to get on that. Um, but Ciara and I have to redo the siding on this thing and we're thinking about extending it and adding to it uh, so that we have more space for stuff because we need a place to park our tractor and the ATV and the mower uh, that is out of the rain, uh, the garage. It's not an option, so we're gonna build some kind of something over here. So that's a project you're gonna see coming up is the um, revamping, renovation, and facelift of the tack room barn. Nothing too much to see here with the um, arena, other than to say that now that Kennedy and Shelby ride in here pretty much every single day, we uh, have a much better time keeping the weeds at bay. The girls ride in here so often that, thank goodness, that has been a very big deterrent for weeds and keeping it weed free. The girls also set up obstacles in here for the dogs to train them. So they've got like tunnels and jumps and stuff like that. So you see like a combo of horse training stuff and dog training stuff out here. This is Miss Raven. This horse probably hasn't seen a camera up in her face before like this. Hey, it's okay, don't be scared. Don't be scared. This is uh, Kennedy's horse, Raven. She's a mare. I cannot remember exactly how old she is, but she is a blue roan. So in the winter, she gets very dark and it's kind of hard to see because of the dappled lighting. But as it warms up and she starts to shed, her body becomes gray and her mane is black and she has like speckled spots on her bootay. She's beautiful. She's a little more horsepower than I can probably ride, but her and Kennedy uh, love each other and they ride well together. It's okay, Miss Raven. She's like, why are you talking to me? Why are you over here? What is that? Kennedy's been doing a lot of Liberty horse stuff with her. And uh, she's even entered a few of the Liberty horse competitions. If you don't know what that is, basically it's um, bitless, bridleless, both uh, you can do riding stuff and groundwork stuff. It's essentially training your horse to listen to you, almost like you would a dog with commands and mo like body movements and stuff. So there's no, you're not pulling on them. There's nothing in their mouth. Uh, they're they're complete, completely free like that. And you're just training them to listen to you without any devices or anything like that. So that's what Kennedy's been been doing with Raven and she loves it which is always fun and exciting. I mean, she still rides her as well, but she really likes the Liberty stuff. And then they're gonna make me come all the way in there, aren't they? All right, so then we have Mr. Vince right there. That is Shelby's horse. Um, he is the one that recently had a very bad colic and had to go to the vet for a few days and cost me a lot of money, a lot of money. Horses colicking is common, but his was pretty bad and it does, um, it can take their life. So. That is Miss Mia right there. That is my parents' horse. So my parents, like I said, still have Bo and then Miss Mia. So she's a mare my mom raised basically from a few days old, I believe, four days old or something. So she's been to training a couple times. She's got a little bit of an attitude. And so we're having some medical stuff checked with her just to make sure that the reason, you see Kuzco behind me, 
just to make sure that the reason for her attitude isn't pain because we don't want to push a horse in training if they're actually in pain and their response is based on being in pain and not just being obstinate. Hey, Koozie. Hey, Koo, don't you spit on me. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Look, let me take off my sunglasses so you can see my face. Hey, Koozie Coos. Hey, Koozie Coos. He's got it in his mouth. I don't know, I'm not risking it right now. He's got a little sass look on his face. So these llamas are crazy, y'all. We don't have typical llamas. They do not exhibit typical llama behavior. Um, they are, they're, they're weird, okay, they're weird. I think that maybe they might have been a little bit inbred or something. We love them, they would stay here, but if they were actually on somebody's farm where they had llamas and stuff, it uh, probably wouldn't go too well for them. Cause like I said, they don't exhibit typical llama behaviors. And uh, sometimes they can be kind of weird. Don't you do it <laughs> if he spits. He's never, they've never spit on me, but they have spit on some of the other family. There's Pacha. There's Pacha. There's Pacha and Koozie. There's Pacha and Koozie. Hi, boys. Hi, boys. There's Mama's Pacha and Koozie. You smell this, Mama. You smell this, Mama. Don't y'all spit on me, okay? <laughs> Don't y'all spit on me. Oh, those are mama's boys. Those are mama's boys. Yeah, it can be a little weird sometimes. Now they're gonna start fighting. Okay, I know, Miss Raven. Let's go over here and check in on the goats and the pigs. They are finally built a contraption that keeps Dottie, whoops, Dottie, I mean Lottie, that keeps Lottie from being able to get out because it just rolls when she tries to climb it, it just rolls. Hello, Raymond. His name's Raymond, but everybody calls him Ray. Uh, if you remember, he's him and his brother are our Nubian and Nigerian crosses. They've gotten very big, <laughs> definitely more on the Nubian side as far as size goes. Hey, buddy. This is the brother. The brothers, the boys, the Nubians and Nigerian crosses. And y'all know and love Miss Lottie. Hello, Miss Lottie, how are you? She got, uh, she tried to escape and she got herself a pretty bad foot injury last year. And uh, we were worried about her for a time there. She, I wasn't sure, but she healed up pretty good. So she's fine now, but she definitely got herself a little injury. Excuse me. They're all at the hay feeder this morning. Hello, Mama Odie and Juju. These are our full Nubians. So this is Mama Odie and Juju. Mama Odie, Juju, hello. Hello, good morning. You guys remember Tiana, she's Princess Tiana. She's the Nigerian baby. Yes, hello, hello. Uh, this is the baby that we got last. I don't know why, you guys, I'm such a bad, uh, all of a sudden I'm forgetting what we named this dang goat. Uh, she's the baby that we got last year at Christmas, or sorry, 2022 at the end at Christmas, where we also got Beth. She was the one that the mom had twins or triplets, and this is the one that she kicked out and wouldn't feed. So she's a bottle baby. You can tell the bottle babies, that Tiana, Lottie, ow, and her, they're bottle babies, and you can tell because they want affection from us, they want attention from us, they love us, they like us. That's the bottle babies. What did we name you? Why am I, ah, don't chew my cord. Oh, the pigs don't want to come up here, but we still have Ruthie, pig face Draper, and then Timothy, Mr. Timmy, Shelby's male pig. He's been neutered, so fear not, we have no piglets. I don't know where they all go. Oh, here's Timothy. There we go. There we go. Hey, Timmy Tim, Tim Timmery, Tim Tim Cheru. Ma'am, excuse me. Here comes Miss Eliza. She's coming from the back over there. Hello, Eliza. This is Eliza Hamilton, if y'all remember. Eliza Hamilton. Yeah, Eliza Hamilton. Sir Timothy Winward. Sir Timothy Winward, hello. And then Ruthie Pigface Draper is as independent as any pig could be. She's all the way down there at the bottom. I'm not gonna walk down there, sorry y'all. She's down there, Ruthie Pigface Draper. She's down there. Lord, we need to come drag this. Hey Vince, Shelby's main man, Mr. Vince. He's a Western pleasure horse, but he rides 
English and Western. Shelby rides him English and Western. He's a good boy. He's a good boy, huh? Yeah, you got a little sick. You scared me half to death, didn't you? Oh, I can see your sweat marks from your saddle. Oh, Shelby did not hose you off well. We're going to have to get her duster. Oh, yes, we're going to have to get her duster. She did not hose you off well, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right, here's the king of the jungle. He's going to flop over on his back because he wants me to rub his belly. Watch. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh, you lazy bones? You lazy bones? You guys know and love Mr. Aslan. Hello, Mr. Azzy. Listen. Listen, this is too much. This is too much tomfoolery. I see you. I love you. It's too much. Look at these jowls. Look at this fish. He's a bum on a ham sandwich. He's a bum on a ham sammy. Yeah, he's laying in the sun. He's sort of, oh, please. Oh, please. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're not getting it. No. Oh, hello, Mr. Douglas. This is Mr. Douglas. He's a sheep. Douglas. He's a sheep -a doodle Hey, he's about a year old, almost a year old. Yeah, he's, he's kind of crazy. He's kind of crazy. He's definitely still a puppy. Kind of nuts. Y'all remember the ducks? Like I said, we've got quite a bit of landscaping and stuff work to do now that we're past winter. We got to drain the pond and everything. Hello. So if you remember, Violet uh, laid on some eggs and that is her baby. And then that one, the male back there, the Drake. So this is Juan. And then that's their baby. Those, those two are the babies. Hi. And then you guys remember Daphne and Marigold and all of the others. Hi. You remember the Great Duck Massacre of 2021 where we lost all so many ducks. Hello, Juan. Juan is the one that drives me absolutely crazy. Male ducks are the absolute worst. He's not bad yet because he's still a baby, the, this one back here. Mr. CR said he'd bring you guys some treats, okay? See, I think she's pretty. It's so hard to see with this lighting. The lighting is bad, so it's hard to see her color, but I love that she has like a little necklace on. And that's her brother back there. And he looks exactly like Juan, exactly. The only reason you could tell the difference and who it is is because he's a little more tan on the belly, like a little lighter, and he's mean to him all the time. So there's never a question because he's always the aggressive, mean one. Hey, Daphne, she's the queen, queen of all. Daphne right here, the queen of all. She's sort of, her and Juan sort of keep things on lockdown. Oh, there comes Ruthie. She wouldn't come up from the bottom of the pasture when I was down there before. Where's Ruthie Pigface Draper? There she is. They heard you getting into the buckets. She thought there might be some food to be had. This is Ruthie Pigface Draper. Disgusting with your face. Sir Tim oh, oh, Timmy, Timmy. Sir Timothy Winward, that was not very gentlemanly of you. Okay, we gotta keep it moving, guys. So yeah, so in here we still have to paint the duck house that CR built. It's got shingles down the side. I'm probably just gonna stain the wood to seal it. And then we're gonna add some more rocks and landscaping and some pond flowers and stuff, but stuff don't like to survive out here. And in case anybody's wondering, those turtles, all of CR's turtles did not make it. We may get some more turtles, but for right now, halt, halted on the turtles. Uh, this is the clothesline that CR built me last year. So I still need to either paint it or stain it, but it's nice and sturdy. Tis not but a flimsy clothesline is a sturdy one. All right, let's keep going. I don't see any chickens. Where are all the chickens? I thought that she died last year. Thought I was gonna lose her forever, but she did come back. Slow growing, but I'm not gonna complain. She's making a comeback, so I'm not gonna complain. Happy to see, considering she started out like four feet tall, she's definitely grown. Hey, BB-8, I'm just filming, what you doing? So if you guys recall, this was the old duck area. Um, this is where the, this was the scene of the crime. This is where the attack happened. Look at my lilacs, by the way. I believe these are Lil' Kim lilacs, if I recall. Lil' Kim, sorry, L-I-L, Lil. Here comes Douglas. Douglas Doofus. This is going to 
this old chicken, well, it's still currently the chicken coop, but it's going to become the dog kennel. We're gonna put air conditioning and heat and stuff out here. And then these are gonna be the outdoor runs for the dog kennel. My roses, the Arbor CR built me. That bird crap up there needs to be cleaned. But all of my roses are coming in, baby. These are all my vining ones. I need to come in and tie them and direct them. Hey, there's one of the chanterelles. There's another chanterelle. There's Clary. Oh no, I'm so sorry. That's uh, Malin. Clary's right there. How do you remember all the chicken names? That's Clary. Tina! Everybody knows Miss Tina. Hello, Miss Tina. Weezer. Wait, what's Weezer? Weezer, Malin, Clary, Tina, and the chanterelles. We did lose a chanterelle, so we're down to three chanterelles. We are going to get some more chickens, but we got to get a brooder set up because we're down to about 12 now. Weezer's mean. So this is what we're going to, you know, refinish to be the dog kennel um, with the run. And then <laughs> Miss Dottie's over there. I don't know if you guys could see her in the corner. Boop, boop, boop. No surprise to anyone, I'm sure, but CR is Dottie's favorite. CR is Dottie's favorite. Hello, Miss Dottie Watts. Hello, Miss Daddy Watts. Hello, Miss Daddy Watts. Yeah. So we found this like um, Australian zoo company that you can order stuff from. So that's where a lot of her stuff inside here in her enclosure is from. She's got big netting. She's got one of those like hard sided ball things uh, that she can sleep in. She's got like a little hammock thing here. And then that's her big housing structure with the blankets and stuff that we we're able to heat for her this winter, but she's going to have an indoor, so we're gonna cut a hole in here so she has an indoor area inside of there uh, where it'll be heated and cooled for her in there when she wants it, but she's got all her climbing limbs and her swings and ropes, and she is hilarious. She hangs upside down and climbs across this whole thing. She's a goofball. I know, she's like, uh, where's my marshmallows, my sweets, my treats, sir? Oh, she likes to love nibble him. Her claws are um, a little intense. So, but we bring her out and she climbs trees and all of that. She loves us. Oh, she's going to jump to the wire. She loves us. She's quite attached to us. So she does not run away or anything like that. She comes back to us. I mean, we always bring like food snacks with us outside, but when she's out climbing trees and going through the woods and stuff, you just call her and shake her snacks and she comes right back. She's not fascinated with this wedding band. Oh, she likes your wedding band? She says, sir, I'd like to get married. Tell me about finding a husband. Look at that tail. She's getting heavy. Yeah, she's big. She's big for show. She's big for show. She can nibble his ears. It's kind of funny when we let her out. She gets along with the dogs pretty well. Never been an issue. And she also uh, is afraid of the chickens. She does not try to attack them, which is kind of funny. This guy's just following me around and laying down on the ground every chance he gets. Aslan, of course. All right, so then we have the garage building that Riley is working on. Uh, pressure washing obviously has not done this side, but he has done the front and the other side. So we're gonna get this painted and then got some work to do on the interior. It's, uh, it's kind of a mess in there. We don't need to go in there right now. You can just take my word for that, okay? How about that? Getting it ready for paint. Gotta pick the paint colors. And then this is, of course, as you've already seen, CR's piece de resistance, his chicken coop. The windows are in there, so we got to add windows. I'm going to paint it, make it purdy, and got to add the front doors and stuff. Unfortunately, what was not accounted for, yeah, catastrophic no. failure in engineering, is that um, Christopher did not realize how heavy this thing was going to be upon completion. Like, I, I totally thought once it was framed, that between the tractor and then all of us, we'd be able to lift it and no. move it where it needs to go. Um, no. It's incredibly heavy. Yeah. So now we need to... Kind of we just need, we're going to borrow probably our neighbor's tractor that's more powerful than ours and uh, use that to move it to its final destination. Obviously not on the driveway, uh, but it's got... So we got to shingle it, um, put the windows on, the front doors, 
and then paint it. We'll she needs a little paint, you know? This is my favorite part, of course. You know, we jimmy rigged the other shed, so it wasn't meant to be a chicken coop, whereas this one is. So it's got access to the nesting boxes from the outside so that the kids can collect eggs without having to go inside the coop. Uh, it should hopefully be much easier to clean because they will have an outdoor area too. So, and it's also got nesting boxes on this side. Yeah, there's a bunch of lizards that have built a home inside my office. And then we've still got our little, you know, pavilion is what I call it, like the pavilion area that I still want to stencil and paint this cement. That might be a summer project, but uh, we're also having electric electricity, electricity, I don't know why I couldn't say that word. We're having electricity run out here. There we go. Uh, we're having electricity run out here so we can actually hang some fans. But I want some fans out here so we can keep it cool. And then I'll probably hang some mosquito curtains and stuff. But yeah, see my hydrangeas. Flowers are starting to come in, y'all. My nose is red and my hands are freezing, but I have a few more animal updates. As you saw, Charlotte is also, she's out doing her job. So we didn't run into her while we were on our tour, but I'll insert some footage here so you can see Miss Charlotte. She's doing great. We got her probably two years ago and she was six at the time. So she's about eight now. You know, Great Pyrenees don't typically live a super long time, so I'm a little anxious about that. She really is like a true guardian, does her job. That's, you know, why you didn't really see her much because she's off doing her thing. I can't remember, you know, what we've talked about in videos and stuff. And this was so recent that you wouldn't have seen it in a video or online because I haven't talked about it because it absolutely broke my heart and devastated me. Miss Beth uh, passed away a few weeks ago. She, as you guys remember, she had been diagnosed right around the time she was a year old with uh, dysplasia, which usually dogs will get like hip dysplasia in their back hips. She actually had dysplasia in her front legs. And over the last year or so, it's just getting increasingly worse. Her pain, it was harder for us to manage her pain. Um, she was having a hard time getting up and down. And when she would walk, she would always limp. And you know, for animals, at least in my opinion, quality of life is uh, giving our animals the best quality of life to me is the kindest thing that you can do for an animal that you love. And so we already kind of knew that like, it's soon we were gonna get to a point where we had to make a decision. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, in the middle of the night while on duty, she uh, hurt her leg, couldn't stand up, couldn't put any weight on it, couldn't walk. It was the day that Jonah had a track meet. So CR took Jonah to the track meet and I had to load the girls, Kennedy and Shelby had to help me lift Beth and load her into the back of my car and take her to the vet for an emergency appointment on a Saturday morning. And the vets uh, agreed that there was, uh, she was in pain and there was no, there was no, um, there was no getting her out of pain and it was never going to be better for her. And luckily our vet, you know, we love our vet so much and he had had a dog with the same issue that uh, had to be put down at 11 months old because of the pain and like how progressive the dysplasia was. So he completely understood and it broke my heart, but um, Beth uh, is no longer with us. She was cremated. I have her ashes in a beautiful little jar in the house. And when I'm ready, we are going to sprinkle them around the property so that she can you know, forever guard the property because that is what she loved to do. And that was, that was Beth. So I'm absolutely devastated and brokenhearted about it. I still just like randomly cry about it because, you know, it, with an older dog, you, you somewhat prepare yourself. It's still hard, but because she was two years old, it just felt so unfair for her. Anyway, so that's the update on Beth. And then also, as I think I touched on in a video, though I cannot remember, uh, Shelby's little dog, Oliver, passed away in December uh, from a freak and rare inner encounter, I was going to say interaction, but encounter with an extremely virulent strain of Parvo. And he was three years old. The vet said that they had never seen a dog his age pass away from Parvo. In fact, it was so shocking that that wasn't even something that they were, he actually had an exploratory surgery because they thought he had something impacted in his intestines. He was at the vet for a few days um, and they were trying to figure out what was wrong with him because they couldn't find anything and then he just passed away. And upon, uh, you know, after he passed and they did some further testing, they discovered that he actually had parvo. And uh, like I said, it was kind of almost like a wild strain, like maybe it was from a fox or something. And Oliver was a poop eater. So our guess is that he 
went under a bush somewhere and found some fox poop or something and ate it. And for whatever reason, his body could not fight it. Uh, Douglas got a little sick, but he was fine. Uh, all the other dogs were fine. So um, it was scary because we were worried that we were going to lose, that all the dogs were going get, to get this because it's very contagious. Um, and Parvo is just so deadly in young dogs, but Oliver was not a young dog. So that was very hard. It was just a few days before Christmas and it was incredibly difficult and um, hard for Shelby because it was just, it came out of nowhere. And so uh, just a few weeks ago when she felt ready, uh, she told, I told her to let me know when she felt ready if she wanted to get another dog. And when she felt ready and she knew what she wanted after she thought about it some more, she ended up deciding to get a full-size Australian Shepherd. And that is Miss Kaya that you have seen. She has one blue eye and one green. And she's super sweet, adorable. You know, Kennedy's been uh, doing dog training and working on that. And uh, for her birthday this year, she asked for a more difficult uh, type of dog to train. Uh, she's got Darcy, and Darcy's uh, a highly trained, well-trained dog. She's a very agreeable dog. And so she wanted to work with a harder breed, um, and she really had been wanting a Catahoula leopard dog. So that's what uh, she got for her birthday in January, and that is at Mr. Atlas. Uh, I always say, like, he has the, he's the sweetest dog. He has, like, the meanest face. It's just part of that, like, very boxy, square face. He also has one blue eye, one green, the same as Kaya, like the same eyes are blue and green like Kaya. Um, I guess she's like him because he was born first, but whatever. His name is Atlas. He's Catahoula Leopard Dog. Kennedy turned 17 in January in case you missed that. Uh, you can't even talk about that kind of stuff right now. So you'll also see in the vlogs, there's another little dog here that Kennedy has here for training. Uh, she's a multi-poo. I call her footstool because she looks like the footstool from Beauty and the Beast when she runs. Um, so I call her footstool, but her name is Sailor and she's here for training. So she'll be here probably normally when Kennedy does live in training, she brings dogs in for three weeks, but I think Sailor will probably be here for five or six weeks. So you'll probably see her in the vlogs in case you're wondering who she is. That's a training dog. And over, you know, the next little bit of, you know, a year plus of vlogs, you will probably see more dogs that you don't recognize. That does not mean that we got a new dog. It just means that there's a dog here for training. So, um, and they kind of fall in with our pack while they're here. You'll just see them running around with our Stella is still kicking and doing. I'm shocked. You guys, when we moved here in 2020, I said, I don't know if she's going to make it through the end of the year. I really didn't think so. And then I think being out here on the farm, getting better dog food, all of that has given her a new lease on life though. It's been three years and she is now almost completely deaf and blind in one eye and her back end is, she's got a lot of nerve pain and stuff. So I loved seeing so many of y'all comment like how happy you were to see her and that she was still doing well. Um, but I, I think that, you know, we're, we're act, we are actually closing in now for Miss Stella. At some point, we may have to make a call for her because again, quality of life, I, she's been too good of a girl to let her suffer in the end. Um, Chloe is still kicking, still running around. Uh, so is obviously Jesse. And um, who am I missing? I know I'm going to miss a dog. I already told you about Darcy. Um, I think I got everybody. I think I got all the dogs. I think that covers everybody. If I forgot anybody, I'm so sorry. It's uh, only because I didn't make a list. It's not personal. Shelby still got her pet rat. So up in the girls' room, they still got the frogs. Kennedy has her lizard. Uh, they've got, we've got one bird still left, parakeet birds, um, and then Shelby has her three pet rats. <laughs> They're so cute. Their little faces and hands are adorable. It's the tails that skis me out. I just, I can't deal with the tails. Uh, this is a farm and animal update. Maybe in the next vlog as we go through, it won't be like a tour and a sit down, but in the next video, I'll update you guys on the, how the kids are all doing and everything and family. My sister had her baby, who was the freaking cutest thing ever. And our friend Amy had her baby, who was the sweetest thing ever. So I've been in a little bit of baby heaven having two newborn babies in my life. If you saw in the last vlog, we'll be working on the flower garden up top and stuff. And then my garden here, uh, well, my garden, like the kitchen garden, the food, more of the food and some flowers down here. Lots of stuff happening with some renovations and things like that and painting and gardening and all of the fun things. So I would obviously love to have you, you know, subscribe, stick around. I'm very glad that you're here. And like I said, I do not promise excitement in all of our videos because, well, our lives are pretty boring, but we love it. It's not boring to us. It's just boring to other people because it's this, you know, same old thing all the time. I happen to like that. So that is it for today's video, y'all. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.